uh, I like research too, very much, so I chose that as an alternative career. I applied to the, some research companies and uh, uh, research labs. Uh, sometimes they found me you know, overqualified, so I try to uh, adapt my CV well to the job description that I apply to. And the Health Force Ontario people helped me so much, especially when I go, went to the alternative career department. So they know more about what, what I can do, what I can help in the healthcare system in Canada. And many of them don't know where to go uh, for employment opportunities. And they might not be exposed to the breadth and depth of employment opportunities within a healthcare institution. I say here at our hospital, um, and in all hospitals, we are like a city within a city. There's more than just physicians and, and nurses that work within the healthcare um, field. And so really there's opportunities for you to develop your skills and abilities um, and still work within a healthcare environment. We know everybody for you know migrants wanna come to the big city. You know, maybe you need to go to the rural area a little bit, you know, and pay your dues there and which is fine and you might like it actually and stay there. So you have to think different. You have to think out of the box. You know, uh, don't be fixated and this is what I wanna do, this is what I wanna be, and that's it because it might not work that way. So be a little bit flexible. I think Ontario um, employers are looking for, for candidates who are um, really committed to the, to the work that they do, who is also committed to lifelong learning. Uh, somebody competent, somebody willing to learn something different, somebody thinking out of the box, uh, a team player, somebody bring different idea. What I have observed um, is that people don't really sell themselves as much, i.e. don't promote themselves, um, they think they're being boastful and they've been brought up to be modest and so um, they, they really won't uh, put themselves out there and so therefore uh, they don't stand as much of a chance as others. Uh, who are just selling themselves, you know, this is what I can do, I can do this for you, I can do that for you, this is what I have done. What we're looking for is someone who's passionate about what they've been trained to do and bringing their whole self with their experience, their excitement, their passion and um, their enthusiasm. I never did a formal job interview in India, but I did a job interview in Canada. I was trained by many staff here, and I, was, I should really thank them who trained me. All this staff in nephrology helped me to get that interview actually successfully. You have to always project positive things. In a way, it helps the whole community, the teamwork. So that's a different thing that they, the staff over here to, uh, taught me how to address the issues when you have been asked in some, uh, one particular question, what is that they want, to understand what is the hidden meaning of that question. The interview here is well structured. There's certain things when they put forth as a question, it has to be answered and tackled in a particular way. I've trained medical students in Canada, I've trained residents in Canada. I know what they are going to bring forth, their answers. So the IMGs, the international health professionals, if they had to get through that interview, they have to says at least those things which the CMGs are going to say. You have to prepare for your interviews, form a well-structured answers, practice it, the pose, the dress code, the, your hair, your shoulders, the way you say things, you can't keep your hands going above your shoulders, you have to have an eye-to-eye -eye contact, the way you put forth things, the pauses, delivery of the sentence, everything counts in that interview. You have to know what you want and put the time and effort to it. That's really the key. Uh, and as I said, it, you get a job because of your competency, not because whom you know. So for any newcomer coming here, if you focus and you know what you want and where you want to be, and you put the time and effort to it, you will get there. I think one of the main challenges is language gaps. Uh, I don't mean knowledge of the English language, but I mean more uh, understanding and be able, being able to communicate in colloquially used terms. I go in to talk with a clinical team about something and they use short forms that I, I don't know what they mean and I 
sometimes myself wonder if I should even ask what they are. If I'm challenged by that, think about what that would look like for one of our IN nurses. They want to demonstrate they're competent and if they're having to ask these questions, what does that look like? How does that um, put them in, in with their colleagues? And this is very important in healthcare context because we're always talking to our patients or their families. We want to avoid conflict. And if you're having, if you're using terms which are not considered culturally normal, you may get misinterpreted. I think that's a big, a big disadvantage that IEHPs face. So they need to be able to uh, get some time to customize themselves with, with those terms. Mentorship is really important. And so, um, and especially when you're a newcomer to Canada uh, and a newcomer to the organization. So we have our senior leaders in particular who have come forward to be the mentors. And we have, for example, a women's group that has been formed and uh, they will interview uh, our senior leaders so that others can learn from them. Group mentoring works well for those mentees who have similar needs, but we do need an individual mentoring on top of it as well. And it very much depends on where you're working, what is your context is, and what do you want to take out of that mentor-mentee relationship. Uh, and from a newcomer perspective, yeah, what, where, where can they uh, grow? What is the opportunity for professional development? Um, what is the transfer or the change process? How does this organization work? What do I do when I'm in Canada? Um, how do I deal with a, a colleague of mine who may not understand what I need to do or what I need to practice or how I need to dress or uh, how I need to pray? It has to be confidential. It has to be open. You can be very sh like it has to be a good sharing of things as well. And the other important thing for mentoring is a person who is your boss cannot be your mentor. A person who has the authority to evaluate you should not be your mentor. That's not a mentor, that's a coach. And the other piece is that it has to be a buy-in from a mentee that this is going to work for my benefit, for my professional growth. So I think that's another two things which are needed for a, a a good mentor-mentee relationship.